Hey everybody, it's Glenn from Choco Tastery. This is gonna be a fun, awesome chocolate tasting that we're about to do live on Facebook and live on Instagram. So welcome to all of my fans out in on Instagram. And we're gonna be um, getting uh, connected with our Facebook um, uh, shortly, in about a minute. I'm gonna get the, so you'll see me, right, looking down a lot because the the Facebook camera is down, but I will come up and see you guys as well as we go along. Um, super excited about this. This is the first time I'm doing both at the same time, and I see a lot of people joining, so welcome. And um, I'm gonna start going live. I'm gonna go live on Facebook right now. Hey everybody, it's Glenn Petriello from Choco Tastery. This is an amazing day. It's the 4th of July, so happy 4th of July to everybody out in uh, the US. Uh, we're gonna be, we're probably gonna have people from all over the world on this. Um, I know um, one of the chocolate makers who is, uh, is the creator of one of the bars for our tasting today uh, is gonna be joining us from Ecuador, so that's pretty exciting. Um, so shortly, um, just so you guys know on Facebook, I'm going live on Instagram as well. So this is a really awesome, fun opportunity and being vulnerable and everything. So, um, so as uh, I'm just going to see, can we get everybody going here? All right. So we have a really great, awesome lineup right now. Hey, Dad. So, um, so we're going to start these, we're going to be having three different bars. This one is from Ecuador, this one is from Bolivia, and this one is from, um, it's, a, it's an inclusion bar um, with Brazilian cacao. So we're just waiting for Twee to join, and um, just so you guys know, Twee is, a, she's a culinary student in Dallas. Um, we met last year at the Dallas Chocolate Festival. Uh, Twee is watching, and I'm, so I'm not seeing her in my viewers. So I just asked her to uh, just go on by phone, because I think that may actually get her in. Um, so we're dancing in this conversation. <laughs> Hi, Mom. How are you? Hola to Rosa on uh, on Instagram. Um, all right, you probably are like wondering in Instagram land what's going on. We're trying to get Twee on Facebook Live with us, and on my iPad it's not working. I don't see her. Twee. Can you go on Instagram right now? Because I'm on Instagram right now, and I can go live with people. So I see you, and I'm gonna do this. We're gonna do this on the fly. This is how it goes. So I'm going to, I got that request, and I'm adding you. All right, we're gonna get this going, all right. Thinking on the fly, it's awesome. Hey! Yes, How are you? <laughs> Worst Asian ever, man. <laughs> hey, this we should great. just use Instagram first. Is it gonna work on Facebook? Well, on it, honestly, I'm I'm going with the flow with Facebook as we're doing this, and I have um, Instagram there. People are coming on board here on Instagram. Oh this my awesome. god! I'm okay. so sorry. I'm like technologically challenged. That's, it's all good. This is a hey, learning experience for both of us, and it's a lot of fun. For uh, sure. Hey, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, what is an electrician's favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to start that. I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, awesome. Okay. 
Well, thank you for having me on today. Um, I really appreciate your time and sorry to everyone in Instagram and Facebook world because mm -hmm. I don't know how to use technology without my husband here. So, you know, all good, all good. <laughs> yeah, all good. I want to I wanna just um, let everybody know who you are. So everybody knows I am uh, the founder and owner of Chocolate Tastery. And we're an edu chocolate education and tasting experience company. We're doing a lot of Facebook lives, chocolate tastings with people around the industry, talking to people who love chocolate and getting them involved in learning about chocolate. Um, so with, with regards to you, um, Um, I know we met last year in um, the Dallas Chocolate Festival, so can you just share a little bit around what, like, um, you know, meeting up at, Chocolate, um, at Dallas Chocolate Festival and, um, and what you're doing now? Yeah, so um, I got to meet you, Glenn, last year at the Tro Dallas Chocolate Festival. It's in September. Um, it's coming up. And I was just pastry student, got the scholarship for the Dallas Chocolate Festival, which has helped me continue my pastry studies. Um, right now, I'm currently in New York for the next two months. I've already done almost a month here for an internship with Ron Ben Israel Cakes. He does beautiful sugar paste flour works and these beautiful opulent cakes. So doing that, because that was one of my areas that I was really interested in, in specializing in. But ever since I've been involved with the festival, I work at a patisserie in Dallas um, at Hot Sweets Patisserie um, by White Rock Lake. Um, my boss has let me do a lot of chocolate work. And ever since she showed me these like chocolate heart pods she did filled with like almonds and candies and stuff, I just got crazy excited about it. And that's when I decided, you know what, I think I'm called to chocolate as a specialty within pastry. So um, I'm going to graduate this next May, and then I am moving to Vegas for one year um, with plans to um, find um, a mentor and pastry chef chocolatier out there to teach me how to do chocolate sculptures and um, chocolate show pieces and bring that skill set back to Dallas and then eventually teach the next generation of pastry chefs um, something like, you know, just chocolate work and then, you know, throw in some sugar work as well because that's a dying art form. So my focus will always be at the very end in education and the next generation of pastry chefs and chocolatiers. That's amazing. Yeah, I, and just from the year that I've known you or less than, probably less than a year, but it's been like, I've always seen like you are, um, you're really passionate about the, the work and whenever you yeah. share about your, your, your daily um, uh, task at work uh, leading up to this, you know, when we're getting related on what we're going to talk about, you really, sh it's like you put your heart into what you do. And yeah. like, I see that through the people who you work with, like giving you feedback, you know, like, oh my God, you're, you're absolutely crushing it. And I want to acknowledge you for um, just really um, taking this all on, coming out to, uh, New York for for the internship with Ron, and I'm sure that's an amazing opportunity in and of itself. Um, so uh, that's that's like really um, uh, it's just really great to see how you want to educate people around uh, you know, the culinary world, the the chocolate world, and um, that's amazing. And um, so talking about chocolate, Thank let's you. get going. Yay! Right. Finally, sorry guys. <laughs> It's all good. It's all, all good. Right. Um, so the first bar, we'll start. So um, just so you guys know, um, we have three bars that we're going to be tasting. Um, this bar is from Nakoa. Um, so they are, uh, the, the origin is uh, Los Rios, Ecuador. It's a 72%. And uh, Nikki, the owner and chocolate maker, um, is going to be actually um, live. I believe she joined. I'm not sure if she's still live or not, but she's watching in Ecuador. So, Nikki, how's it going? Um, and then, uh, so we'll get to this one first, and then we'll talk uh, through Solstice. Uh, they are in Utah and uh, in Salt Lake City, and this one is Bolivia. 
And then the last one is from our friends at Dick Taylor Chocolate. They do a seasonal bar, which is really awesome. And um, this one is a brand new release. It's bee pollen and fennel. So um, they're based in Eureka, California. Um, and yeah, you guys, oh. yeah, so that's on Facebook. You guys can see it perfectly. Here, I need to do like a flip, but I don't know how to do that here. So you're gonna see it like uh, mirrored in Instagram world. Um, so let's start with uh, Nicola. And just so you guys are, uh, who may not know, uh, with Chocolate Tastery, I created this, um, this chocolate tasting guide. And so this is an easy way, approachable way for everybody to learn how to taste chocolate in a mindful way. And not rush it, chomp on it, munch it, but basically go through four different steps uh, to actually take in various characteristics about it. And then obviously what you taste. And that is gonna be the, the point to evoke an experience in you. Like what did you like, what you didn't like. So we can go through this tweet. I think you may have it. I yes, I have so, it on my screen. Awesome. All right. So, um, do you have the, the the this one already? Oh, all right. It's beautiful packaging. I like the artwork inside. It just seems very thoughtful the way they've put together their packaging. Oh wow! I did not even notice this. This is amazing. See that? Yeah, it's like beautiful artwork. You can see that. Yeah. There's some foil work. I really appreciate marketing and branding like that. And then this. So this is a side open. So it's like uh, ready to go here. Ooh, look oh, how pretty that broke. is. Ah. <laughs> Come on, Glenn, get with it. <laughs> I just dropped one. Okay. He's thinking so, about July 4th already. He's like, I'm going to party <laughs> this afternoon. I'm going to take it easy today. <laughs> oh, so so Nikki just mentioned on uh, Instagram chat, um, it represents the woman involved in the project. Oh, that's awesome. That is really awesome. So the, so I'm going to just read, read this one little paragraph here so you guys can get an understanding of it. It says, um, pardon the emergency vehicles going by. Do you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to New York. <laughs> yeah. So um, NACOA is an initiative of Ecuadorian women who dare to build a more sustainable cocoa value chain through inclusive and resilient practices that unleash their wildest potential to improve their lives and their communities. And then the quote is, a free spirit is someone inspired by life and whose attitude inspires others. So it's really nice. Love it, love it. And it says on the bottom, the body, the chocolate your body needs. It's really nice. <laughs> yes, it is full of flavonoids. I actually have a chemistry degree and um, chocolate, you know, people give it a bad rap because they're like, oh, you know, it's sweet, sugar, blah, blah, blah. But when you get into this artisanal chocolate, everything is natural in it. And so you've got all these great, you know, if everything's a chemical. But I'm going to say, you know, these great chemicals, these great um, um, flavonoids and flavones floating around and that they can be self-healing as well. So, you know, I like to look at chocolate as not only an art form, but it's like, how do we heal our bodies with it as well? And certain things, you know, you've heard of like basic um, coffee where it's less acidic. So it helps you with your blood and whatnot. So chocolate's the same way. I mean, food is healing. Yeah. So I love the fact that they say it's the chocolate your body needs. That's really cool. <laughs> Great. Uh, so Sandra actually joined on Facebook. So anybody on Facebook watching, we are on live with we on instagram we've had some technical difficulties <laughs> he wasn't able to join on Facebook, but we got her on instagram so i'm doing a dual live casing here so if you don't see tweet here you guys 
she's on Instagram. Um, and I'll, I'll be sure to post the Instagram video uh, on you know, my YouTube channel so you guys can oh, watch okay. it, okay? So, um, so this is what the chocolate bar looks like after it broke on me. It's really nice because it has Beautiful. like, um, uh, I just zoom in there for the Facebook folks. Um, it's like grooves and it has some cacao leaf uh, designs on it. Here, yeah, there you go. Tweet taking care of our, our Instagram. I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right. So, um, so with, with, our, with my guide, the first step is looking at the color. Like, is it like super, super dark or is it, you know, light to medium dark brown? Um, so in my light, it's not super, super dark, but it's like, I would say like a medium dark. I would agree with you on there. It's, you know, medium dark. It's not like black dark. Mm. And so the next one, next step is to give the snap. Ready? Okay, I'm going to do this. I like it. I heard it. Awesome. It's got a nice snap. Yeah. Just in case anybody didn't hear it. <laughs> All right. So next, we want to smell the aromas. Mmm. Mmm. So what I'm tasting is a, like initial burst of cocoa. Yes. It almost smells coffee-like to me. Mmm. Yeah. Coffee and slightly acidic. Like, you know how wine, like when you smell it, it's like kind of acidic? I'll be interested to see how it tastes because I'm getting like coffee and acidity mm -hmm. on my, in my olfactory um, sense, but we'll see taste-wise. Yeah, let's do it. Let's taste it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's good. Wow. <laughs> that's really good. Mm. Mm. That's really good. I like it. It's nice. It's a nice, like, tasting chocolate. This is, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge chocolate fan because I'm not really a big sweets fan. And so for me to say, like, hey, I want to eat this again is because I usually don't say that about sweets except for ice cream. So this is, wow. like, really nice on the palate. It's really smooth. It's got a little bit acidity mm. at the back of my palate, like, at the very, very back. Yeah. I can taste the acidity. But it's nice and smooth. It's not too earthy. I would almost say... It's almost kind of fruity. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting. So it starts out like, like really earthy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have this like brightness going on, but like that mm -hmm. acidic notes coming through. Yeah. And then you have like the, in, so the, the, the package says like deeply floral with orange blossom notes and fruity notes, including plums, mango, yeah. apricot. There's your, and then coffee and red wine notes. So it, it oh, it's wow. very, like multi-dimensional there. Like, yeah, I didn't even read it yet. And I taste that. Like at the very beginning, you said, mm. like you taste the cocoa at the beginning. And the more and more I let it sit on my palate, I could taste more of the fruits. Like when you said plums and fruits, I was like, I definitely taste that. It just developed in my palate. Exactly. That's the one thing, guys. Mm, that's so good. That you want to, um, you want to just to to note like whatever you taste is perfect, right? There's no right or wrong answer, and the experiences that we have in life are what like our mind and our palate automatically thinks to. So if we don't have, um, if we don't really taste like um, a specific fruit growing up a, a, a lot like that's okay then just go to the deli or the grocery store pick up those fruits and taste them once in a while um like oh, i don't have a lot good. of plums and apricots but i get i remember from the once or twice in my life that i did 
it tasted like that. It tasted like that type of fruit. And then yeah. coming through, like going forward, you just like to develop your palate, you just taste a wide variety of chocolate plant, of, of fruits and nuts and all that stuff. Um, so yeah. Man, that amazing. was really good. Yeah, I yeah. didn't even read the label because honestly, I kind of wanted to be surprised. Like, what am yeah. I going to taste and what are they saying I should taste? And I, you know, obviously the chocolate at the beginning, but then it developed and good God, that was good. Like I taste at the back of my throat, the acidity that they're talking mm -hmm. about and it smelled like wine. And then that plum though, like that brings me back to my childhood because we used to grow up eating plums yeah. all the time in Texas and, you know, Asian family. So we always had fruit. So I definitely taste the fruit. So man, well done on this bar. It is, I would eat this over and over every day. And I don't even like chocolate that much, so that's saying okay. something. <laughs> so we do have a, on, on Facebook, we have a question. Uh, what's the variety, varietal of the, um, the chocolate? So this is um, Ariba, prime flavor Ariba uh, cocoa, uh, cocoa beans. So it's uh, probably the Nacional variety. Um, you know what I like about this, too? I'm looking at the harvest date on here, and it's December 2018, and they made it by January of 2019. So it's only, like, what, a month less than that yeah. um, gap? So we're getting pretty fresh chocolate here. Like, what, we're in July now? So it's only been a couple of months, and, you know, it's had a little bit of time to mature as well. So, I mean, yeah. this is such a fantastic bar. I'm very pleased to have it. I might have yeah. to go get some for my husband <laughs> when yeah, I so see him. This is so for everybody. Um, this is like on on Facebook. You'd see this is what Twee was talking about that um, the harvest and uh, the harvest was 2018, uh, December 2018, and um, they made the bar a month later. So uh, now it's six months after that. Um, you know we That's have fantastic. here in the U.S. Um, so I got this bar at the Meadow in New York City. Um, I'm sure um, we could put together a list of resources of where we can find this bar um, for, for everybody who is wanting to try it. Um, that would be super helpful. Yeah. Right, Man, that so, was good. Yeah. So It's complex. I like the complexity of it. Uh, I would eat that with, with plums, to be honest, like take a picnic out. Mm -hmm. Go out to the park and just, you know, little cheese, a little wine, a little plums, a little chocolate. Call it a good day. Yeah. All right. So uh, you ready for bar number two? Yeah. So this is the Solstice Bar uh, from uh, Palos Blanco. It's a wild uh, harvested cacao uh, in the Beniano region. Um, so for people who don't know where that is, this is Bolivia, and that dot is where the cacao is from. That's Palos Blancos. All right, and so Solstice, um, they're a chocolate maker out in Utah, um, and they have really cool packaging. Oh. I think um, this packaging is unlike most others because you're able to uh, unwrap it, and then you could reseal it back up uh, without having that, like, the um, the plastic to seal it, like a Ziploc bag or or plastic bag. So this it kind of like, reminds me of, up. like, a coffee bean bar or, I mean, mm -hmm. coffee bean bag. Yeah. So oh, God, the that so good. is reminiscent of the sun, so they have that, yeah. I love how you're you're taking care of our ID crowd. I got my, I got, I'm taking care of. <laughs> <laughs> hey, divide and conquer. Yeah. All right. Oh, man, so, this is a pretty bar. Yeah. Um, and so comparing the colors of the bar, now that we're on bar two, we're looking at the colors and comparing, I'm seeing that um, they are somewhat uh, this bar is like a shade or a little bit darker, yeah. like a darker browner, like very little um, yeah. than the, the Nicola bar. Um, so yeah, let's hear the snap. 
right. It's a softer snap, I think. Just slightly. Yeah, I think it's a slightly softer snap. It feels a little softer to me texturally. Um, yeah. I'm looking at the two here, like where we've broken them up. It's just like, you know, I'm in tune with looking at these textures and stuff. It just looks slightly softer. Um, I actually mm. think the color looks slightly lighter than the Nikoa. Are we tasting already? Are we smelling? Oh, we need to smell, don't we? Ooh, this one's fruity. Yeah. This one's really fruity. fruity. This one's super fruity. Hold on. I'm not going to read the packaging yet. I'm going to taste first and then go with right. it. Yeah, Are we ready? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, this is good. Mm. It's nutty. Oh, yeah. I really enjoy nutty chocolate bars. Oh, that's good. Mm. Oh, it's real nutty. I like it. Okay, let's see. It says, mm. produces a deep rich chocolate with subtle nuts of honey, mm. nuts, and fresh cream. About two-thirds of the way through, you get that, like, honey note it's like yep. honeycomb i just got there <laughs> holy cow i taste it tastes acidic yeah. to me and i wonder if it's that honey bit. note yeah because honey is acidic mm, god that was like good nutty, nutty, and then like acid mm -hmm. just like that <laughs> i love the nuttiness like that's i haven't ever tasted anything nutty before and i was like uh this is nutty and they're like hold on there it is Mm. And then that honey, and I think that's the acidity I'm tasting. It's not like wine acidity. Mm -hmm. And then I'm tasting the creaminess of it, like when it says cream. I, super creamy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's super creamy. Oh, that is good. Mm. Mm. Wow. I kind of want to oh, take a piece of this. <laughs> Man, good choices on chocolate this this time. This is freaking delicious. I hate the word delicious, but I'm going to use it. It's yeah. complex. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's when you have multiple flavors going on in a bar. I think that's like the utmost flavor journey experience. Like you want to relate to something with that bar, and if it's just one mm -hmm. flavor throughout the entire bar, it's not fun. We you know what it? You know what it kind of tastes like if you have to describe it in real food to people that they can relate in. Think about like a peanut butter honey sandwich with a big glass of milk. That just is like encased in chocolate. That's what it tastes like to me. Mm. Like if we have to relate it to people who can't taste with us right now, that's how I would describe it. It's nostalgic. That's mm -hmm. like, I feel like the first one is very adult. It's very much, ooh, let me put on a nice sundress. Let me go outside, have a nice fru fru picnic. This is kind of like, okay, kids, we're going yeah. back to like what you grew up with. This one's nostalgic. That's, it's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I totally see that experience for you. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's a nice bar, man. Dude, mm -hmm. that's a really nice bar. Now I want a glass of milk. <laughs> I know. We should have been drinking water. Oh, hey, cheers. Follow, I'm, I'm human. I, I don't even follow my own process. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, let me de i tell you real quick. FYI, I'm obsessed with Boston Terriers. Therefore, the little buster. Mm. Nice bottle. Thank you. I designed that myself for my wedding as gift. <laughs> <laughs> overachiever, overachiever. Uh, all right. So um, you want to go for the third one? Oh, yeah. I'm excited, man. I'm all pumped up. This yeah. is awesome. Thanks for inviting me. I've never done one. I've never, A, done Facebook Live, obviously, because of the technical difficulties. I've never yeah. done Instagram Live because I just never do. So this is very much a learning curve on technology and tasting today. Definitely. 
And for everybody still with us in Facebook land, um, we had some technical difficulties <laughs> with the Facebook, so um, we weren't able to get her onto Facebook. However, we are live on Instagram at Chuggo Taste 3. If you guys want to go check that out, and then I'm going to have that video and this video somehow together or separate or whatever on um, throw it up on my YouTube page so that you guys can check it out. Um, all right. And so this one's the last. This one. one is bee pollen and fennel. So this is an inclusion bar. And Dick Taylor, they've been around for a while. They have probably one of the most beautiful molds out there. And I've never seen their mini inclusion bar molds, but we are seeing it live right now. So this, so this. Um, so can you tell us what inclusion bar means for people who might not know what that means? Sure. So inclusion Versus bar means that it's a regular chocolate bar, like we've been having the first two, um, but it has other flavors. that we're including in it. So for instance, this bar has fennel seed and bee pollen. So you also may see bars that, um, that may have nuts in it, or like the fan favorite, sea salt. Um, they may be sprinkled on top or inside the chocolate. So growing up, we may have noticed like a Nestle Crunch bar, right? I'm not a big fan anymore of that. But it's like <laughs> rice, puffed rice in there, and it's inside. That's more of a candy, right? It's over, over sugary, whatever. But the today's inclusion bars from chocolate makers in, around the country and around the world, they take it to the next level, and they use single origin or blend of chocolate to create an inclusion bar with certain ingredients. So one of my friends um, at Letterpress, they make amaranth crunch. So they puff amaranth, which is um, mm, grain for everybody who doesn't know. And then they, they, they mix it in. Um, so that should probably cover the, uh, the, the realm of inclusion bars. Um, so for me, this is really pretty on the back. You see that? Zoom in there. I haven't been messing around while you were looking down at all, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> so um, these, so oh, their big bars have amazing design. So um, definitely check it out. I'll, I'll post a link to their bars. Um, but these are their small mini bars. So they have their Dick Taylor brand so brand so it's, it's so really freaking cool. cute it's almost like a it takes me back to like an adult version of like breaking off a Kit Kat bar yeah not a Kit Kat bar oh but, for sure <laughs> and nowadays with all of us being like calorie conscious this is kind of like break it pack one for the office pack one for the evening and then you don't eat the whole bar in one day so they're, they're helping us, you know, keep our waistlines trim. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> all right. So um, in trying not to spill over all the inclusions, um, looking at the how uh, the, the shade of brown is, I think it's, it's pretty similar to the lightness of the first one. Maybe a little bit lighter. I think it's slightly lighter. Yeah. And this is a this is a seventy percent from Brazil. Oh God, that smells so good. So you do have that like aroma. Oh, well, first we need to break it. You hear that? Hold on, let me break it again. It again. It's a pretty soft break. Oh, gosh, I got a that good snap that. on that. On my I got a decent snap. I think the for me at least the the best snapping was probably the Nicoa, the first one we did. 
it just snapped beautifully. The other one had, I think, a little bit more cream or something in it. And then this one snapped nicely, but it was kind of soft sounding like that second one we did. Mm. All right. Oh my God, the smell. You know what so, I think of what? when I smell fennel like this? Fuck. I don't know why, but I think of the Vietnamese soup pho. That's what I think of. Mm, that's interesting. I know, because I'm like, we don't put fennel in pho at all, but to me, it mm. smells like pho. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if it's because it's with the bee pollen and chocolate, because in pho, the main ingredients are um, star anise, cinnamon, mm. and cloves. Oh, and wow, so there's no good. fennel in it, but I smell this and I think of, uh, I don't know why. Mm. Well, I guess well, we'll find out soon for enough. For me, I think it smells like, um, it, I, oh. I'm Italian and I, you know, I've got like the, like on Sunday dinners, we would have Italian sausage. And so yeah. um, the fennel on the sausage always yep. brings you back to that. So yeah, let's just go for it. Cheers. 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 Mm. Ooh, there's some acidity coming through towards the middle. I just got there. I taste earthiness at the very beginning. Mm. Wow. That fennel takes over. Mm. Mm. There it is. Mm. It's like chocolate butt for me. <laughs> that is literally you what it that. tastes like. Anything you put your mouth to, you, you could totally create that. I wanna, oh my God. I wanna read the back uh, writing on this. The, their, oh. like, yeah, I'll read it while you see it there. Um, drawing inspiration not only from the summer garden, but also the, mm. the, the insects that help make it happen. The foundation of this bar is a special 70% Brazil that blends seamlessly with the floral notes of fennel. The bee pollen contributes an effervescent citrus punch, reminding us that the best, reminding us of the best that summer brings. So it's very, the, the earthiness comes through mm -hmm. totally. And it, like it really um, complements the, the chocolate, the, the Brazil chocolate is like, has that like chocolate note and between the, the earthiness of the fennel it is like the floral notes. It's like really, really um, well done. It's really interesting that they note that it's summery, like a summer garden, because mm. before you even read that, obviously I didn't read anything because I don't. And I was thinking like, it's light. Like mm. you think it would be fennel. Oh, very overpowering. Bee pollen, very overpowering. Mm -hmm. Chocolate overpowering. But then when it's all combined together, it's literally like you feel summer. Like when I've been tasting these, it's like, what seasons do you think of when you're mm. eating these? And this one is definitely summer. I would almost wow. venture to say late spring because it's so light. Like you could keep eating this and you have that little punchiness of the fennel. It's strong, but the chocolate holds up against it. I do taste the acidity of it. And, mm. But you know, it starts off just really earthy and then it just ends ends up really nice and I think of the three this one it's a different acidity and I don't know if it's the most acidic like the first one it was a stronger acidity like you can taste the wine this one it's like it's subtle and it kind of creeps up on you and I think it lingers mm -hmm. a little longer at least on my palate I think it lingers longer the acidity does yeah there's definitely um like the this bursts of like it depends on how many fennel pieces are on the, the piece that you're eating because yeah which, like i got more fennel 
like later on and then it goes away and then comes back. And then with the bee pollen, I didn't just try to taste it on my own, on its own. And I didn't chew the fennel seeds either. They are full-blown mm. fennel seeds there. I didn't chew it because I didn't want it to overpower my palate. Mm. I mean, you could. I mean, I just... I did. I didn't. <laughs> so I got the nice perfume of it, the texture mm -hmm. of it without, you know, because I feel like, you know, with a lot of these strong spices, if you chew on it, it can yeah. really just, you know, kill your palate right away. And so I'm like, I think it's more like a way of just enhancing the chocolate. And it really did. Mm. Yeah. I, I see what you mean by the fennel reminding you of like, family dinner with your family mm -hmm. and all I taste I'm like you know I love Italy I just call myself like an old Italian woman at heart but I'm like man all I taste is pho I don't know why and there's no <laughs> it's like the licorice flavor of it it does it does and, I, and as you say licorice that's a, the word that was in my mind as I am like listening to you it was like licorice like right now it's licorice but it's not like that, like annoying licorice flavor. Like, you know, like sometimes like I love licorice, but sometimes you taste it. It's so overpowering. And this mm -hmm. one is just nice. It's mellow. It's just an easy eat. It's something, you know, you put a nice sundress on, you're walking in a park, like you're just hanging out. Like, that's what I think of this. It's just really easy going. And it's just mm -hmm. one of those, you know, the other ones like reminds me of, you know, a sandwich have a big glass of milk. This one's like, no, nah, it just stands on its own. doesn't need anybody yeah. else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was delicious. Yeah. So what was your favorite bar? Damn, I, mean, I knew you were going to ask me that. Contenders here. They're all so different. Yeah. I don't know. I think it depends on my mood. I know that's a cop-out answer, but I think it'll depend on my mood. Like, the first one was just stunning. And mm -hmm. I think if it was one of those days where I'm feeling very accomplished and very adult, that's what I would grab. Like, seriously, like, I would grab for that one when I'm like, okay, I just got this done. I feel very like hashtag adulting right now. That's the <laughs> one I would grab right off the bat. Yeah. I think the Bolivia one, the second one we had, would be great just like as a daily eater one, just because it's just nice. It's just nice mm -hmm. on the palate. It's just an easy eating bar. It's one of those, I'm just going to go home. I just worked out every day. I'm just going to treat myself and have a little square. And this yeah. last one, I feel like it's kind of a, I don't know, a special occasion bar. Kind of like, I'm going to spend time with myself for some self-care. And I'm going to have the whole thing. And I'm going to feel okay about it. Nice. So I think, you know, it's a bit of a cop-out answer, but they're all so distinct. It's literally like asking, what's your favorite child? And the answer is, well, I don't have favorites because they're all so different. They're yeah. very different. They're very distinct. Um, and it literally, I think it's one of those things. It's like your mood changes, and I think your chocolate should change with your mood. Yeah, I completely agree. I, um, I love how each one fits in a separate part of – like your mood, your day, your yeah. life. <laughs> it's like there's a chocolate for every occasion is what basically yeah. you're saying. Um, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, you eat like your Hershey's and we all grew up with Hershey's, but it's like when I think of like, eh, it doesn't really evoke really good memories. Whereas these evokes like a memory that I've had, like a very distinct one, like, you know, I, I don't know why I think of like a picnic with, you know, my husband for the first one. I mean, that's what I think of, you know, you have a nice frou-frou adult picnic and that's what I think of. So, you know, I think food in general should evoke memory. It's like smell. That's why when you go through, what is it?
look like? What does it smell like? And I think smell is one of the things we really underutilize and um, underestimate. It's like smell is the first thing. It's like you smell freshly baked cookies. What do you think of? Usually grandma. Yeah. You know, I smell, mm -hmm. you know, fish yeah. soup. And I think of my grandma. Totally. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I don't really have a favorite just because I think they fit in with different parts of, if not the day, the season or mm -hmm. the event. And I think, you know, chocolate should be celebrated. You know, I'm not a huge chocolate eater, but sometimes I'm like, man, I really want some chocolate. And so at home, we'll keep different artisanal chocolates from different um, origins. And depending on our mood, that's what we end up eating at home as well. It's not like, oh, I always grab this one. It's like, no, like I'm in the mood for this. It's kind of like, I'm in the mood for. a big BLT or I'm the mood for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't really compare them. That's awesome. It's awesome to hear that and to share all those experiences. Um, it's really like really awesome to, to see that the mission has been accomplished. Yeah. Right? Like I learned what, something new. What the goal was of today is to have fun, to get, um, like get related more with you and like what you're doing um, and also to like discover new chocolate bars that I haven't tasted these before. I've tasted this one, but, uh, but to get you to see and discover how it brings you to a specific point in life, the specific time, uh, specific people that is all about connecting people and relationships um, like it's conversations around chocolate um, so that's that's uh, that's the lineup and for me um, my favorite um, I have to go with the the Ecuador bar. Um, oh, I, you're so frou frou. <laughs> but but here's the thing. That's okay. I'm have, the most frou frou person ever. Like if like there was like a chocolate gun to my head, right? Oh god. Because because I've seen one of those like as a joke. Somebody made a, a chocolate gun for some reason. But like if I had to pick one of these bars and. Like one bar going, I'm on a two hour train ride or something, I needed a snack, and I have these three bars, I'm taking this one to go with me. Just because Ooh, of the man. complexity of the flavors. The Bolivia one, like that I feel is a great sit on the couch, sit on your bed, watch TV and yeah. relax and to like your 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 cookies and milk before bed. <laughs> it's, like, I love the, I love the, the, the darker roast that brings out that nuttiness to it. Um, and then the, this, like the, the Dick Taylor one, it's just so, like, it just brings out this brightness. Like, if you're out and about, in the, like, having a picnic or something like in the summertime like it's very summery like it just feels like if i were to have this bar in the winter i'd probably be like huh all right yeah cool. But now it's like summer, it's bright, it's, um, there's a lot going on, it brings you back to the Sunday dinners with my family, like it, there's all these memories coming up from Yeah. It.
Um, I think if you put a chocolate gun up to my head, I agree. I, I probably would pick the Nikoa just because mm-hmm. it was complex, man. Like you get a note, it doesn't rush into the next note. It yeah. stays there. You get a little break and then like you taste that chocolate and then it goes there. So, you know, I think from a culinary standpoint, I would probably pick that one too. It's, it's yeah. complex. It's acidic. I think what I liked about it is the acidity because things can be so jarringly sweet that it's just like, why, why bother? It's like you eat a steak. Well, what do you put on it? A little acidity, a little citrus to it. Mm-hmm. makes it more interesting, brings out the flavor. And I think, you know, I love all of them. I think they're delicious. But if you made me choose like, okay, you can only pack one on your trip. I think I would pick that first one as well. And I'm not agreeing with you because you picked it first. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. I, I think I would pick that one first anyways. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I love all of them. They're yeah. so good. Yeah, and, exactly. you know, I think it's important to have different chocolates in your pantry, not just one brand and whatnot. You know, mm-hmm. you can have one brand, but have like their five or six different ones. But it's such a wide variety. I don't think we really look at chocolate that way of, okay, there's nuances to chocolate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it's important, you know, how you taste it. Some people just shove chocolate in mouth, start chewing, and they don't realize you need to close your mouth, let your nose take over, let your, you know, your taste buds take over that way. And I think that's where the nuances, and it's really an art form. Like, I have so much respect for these chocolate makers from Bean to Bar. I mean, it's it's a hell of a process. Mm -hmm. So props to those people who make delicious, (laughs) delicious chocolate. It goes out to... Kudos out to Nicola, to Dick Taylor, to Solstice teams. You guys are like rocking it. Um, so um, this is not the, the like I want to just share with everybody um, that's tuning in on both Facebook and Instagram. Like this is um, going to be something regular that I'm going to be doing. I have a lot of people in the industry who um, who are really interested in um in doing these live tastings, we get to talk, have conversations. Um, and so going forward, um, I have one coming next week on July 10th with one of my friends. Um, in the, He's not even in the industry. He does music stuff. And uh, he just really <laughs> likes chocolate. So we're doing a, a live tasting with them. Um, nice. and, uh, and so going forward, um, I'm going to be reaching out and connecting with others, and it may just be an opportunity to have a Instagram tasting live with one of our fans. Maybe we could do a little contest and do that. That we think that'd be fun, um, and also on Facebook if we ever get that to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet it's, way, it's definitely me on that one. Yeah. No, and, what you're doing is so cool. And, you know, education is a really big part of it. Um, obviously, I'm going to, you know, stick in a plug here for the Dallas Chocolate Festival. Definitely. It's coming up September 6th through the 8th. It is Friday night is a VIP event with all sorts of goodies. It is our 10 year anniversary. Wow. And, uh, we will be out there with vendors, whether Mm -hmm. they be bean to bar chocolate makers or. All right, guys, for some reason, um, the live feed ended on Instagram. Um, So back on Instagram. um, So we were in the middle of talking and it just stopped. Um, So I'm just seeing Twee come back. Yeah, uh, all right. All right, I got you. Gosh, we're little difficulties on Instagram, we're good. Um, oh, lost you, hi, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. It's so weird, it just ended. <laughs> I was like, okay. I yeah. was like, I didn't like my plug. Um, but anyway, stop yeah. by Dallas Chocolate Festival, September yeah. 6th through 8th. It's in downtown Dallas. Um, that's where I'm from. Um, mm-hmm. 
all the money that goes to it helps support culinary students like me and pastry students like me in the area. So there's a scholarship, obviously, you have to have the good grades and whatnot. But you go to these events, you'll p see people from El Centro College, where I'm from, you'll see people from Collin Co County College and their amazing pastry and chocolate program out there as well. So everything is geared toward education. There are talks from chocolatiers, chocolate makers, pastry chefs on different applications and what they do. And it's about, to, it's about educating the public about what we do. So come by, uh, tickets go on sale mm -hmm. August 1st. It's cho dallaschocolate.org. It's our 10 year anniversary, come out, you know, you might get a cool pin. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. Oh, yeah, yeah cool. so definitely come out. It's a great opportunity. I've gotten to meet a lot of chefs at the event and then worked with them on weekends, just volunteer work events with them and see what they do. It's a great learning experience. Bring the entire family out. It's kid friendly. Yeah. There's events for kids as well. So, you know, there's hands on <laughs> stuff. I mean, I love it. These people have given me so much and they really have been my advocates for pushing me in this industry and they do it with everyone else too so there's a lot of support in the industry it's a hard industry i won't mm -hmm. lie you work long hours but having someone like glenn having dallas chocolate festival having other pastry chefs it's been really for me a, a huge blessing and an opportunity for my professional growth yeah. so i can't you know i can't thank you enough for you know finding out that, hey, you're in New York. Why don't we do a chocolate taste? I'm like, sure, I'll learn yeah. something. And I'm not going to read anything. So then I can be completely surprised by everything and give you a very, you know, honest assessment of, you know, what I taste, smell, and hear, and see. Yeah. And I will be out there in Seattle. I mean, Dallas. Getting my festival all mixed <laughs> up. So, yeah, I'll be out in Dallas in September. Um, totally will be uh, wanting to do another I'll be doing a lot of Facebook Live or Instagram Live, whichever one works. But, um, but definitely, let's let's reconnect down out in Dallas and do another one of these. Uh, maybe we'll get people who come to the festival to do some tastings with us. Um, and so it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to working with Sander and the team out there. Um, it was just, last year was my first um, experience there and was able to really get like the magic that happens over that weekend. And I think it's like extended. It's three days. Day. Yeah, we've grown so much. Great. It's gone from one day of the full festival with all the vendors to mm -hmm. two full days now. And we've got vendors from all over the world. The first time I ever went was, you know, the first time I received the scholarship and I was like, oh, I'm going to go volunteer. And oh my gosh, like mm -hmm. some of my favorite chocolates are from the international people. Like there's one from Mexico that, my husband won't stop talking about their chocolates. And so we yeah. bought every bar they made. And it's like, which one's your favorite? He's like, well, I don't have a favorite anymore because they're all so distinctly good on their mm -hmm. own. So there's, you know, there's people from Mexico, from um, all over the States, obviously, but literally mm -hmm. all over the, the world. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really grown. I highly suggest it to anyone. And if anyone's interested in visiting Dallas, it's very affordable. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you want to get a hotel room, it's literally across the street. It's nice. But, you know, Dallas is very affordable. We've got two airports. So come on down, have some Texas hospitality and maybe some barbecue as well. Yep. And we'll, we'll definitely be promoting that as well. We'll put a link down. Uh, I'll do a little, we'll do a little ad of some sort uh, to promote it. Um, and so if you're in the area, come on down. Um, so I think that wraps it up. I want to thank you so much for uh, joining me today, for all your experiences and just the, the memories that you shared with us, uh, all the insights from being the culinary superstar that you are. Um, so I really want to thank you for uh, joining in, uh, in my mission with Chocolate Tastery to, to really share chocolate with everybody. And um, yeah, I think uh, now is the time to go Follow through on your 4th of July plans. And Yay! Go out there, watch some fireworks tonight, celebrate the U.S., and um, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers! Bye, see y'all later. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Facebook guys. <laughs>